happen. Is it on-off yeah. switch on that thing? Fabulous. I feel... Can't hear you. Turn it on. Oh, it says on. How about that? <laughs> Look at that. I know, I know. Do you feel heartened? Yes. Encouraged? Yes. Good. I know I do. Um, really, it's, it's been a rough road. But I do feel inspired. There are such great people We're doing such great things. I want to be one of those people doing great things. I want to be somebody doing what I can to make a difference. And I think if you're here, you're one of those two. Fantastic. Um, I, do I have any more announcements? Raffle. The raffle. Um, please, six tickets for $5. Yep. Right? That's, that's the way it goes. Six tickets. For, please, each one of these is worth about $80. So, and one of them has one of the tickets to the, um, to the conference in it. So that has a value of $180 right now. So please do that. We'll be drawing names in about 15 minutes. Um, so please contribute. Thank you all for being here. We'll conclude. We'll still, enjoy yourselves. We're not done. We're not done. Oh, did Bill, where's Bill? Did you want to read? I wasn't sure if you said yes or no. Bill, come on up. Bill, Bill Becker is founder, thank you. I wasn't sure from your email. Bill Becker is the founder of a fabulous organization called Freedom X. He can describe it. Um, part of our American Freedom Alliance. He's on our board. And Freedom X tackles freedom from a different angle, from the legal aspect. And he wrote the most moving Independence Day piece. And we thought he should share it with other freedom-loving, America-loving people. Can you all understand me through my accent? <laughs> <laughs> testing, testing, that's coming through. Uh, I'm 100% American, so I feel pretty good to be a member of American Freedom Alliance. Uh, Freedom X is a nonprofit public interest law firm representing Christians, conservatives, and conservative Jews on BDS matters, but we represent conservatives whose uh, expressive rights have been uh, taken from them. Uh, in Germany right now, it, it was interesting, I think it was uh, uh, Phelan just mentioned, in Germany, uh, a couple had a Facebook site where they were critical of the German immigration policy. They went to trial and were just sentenced to prison for expressing even non-antagonistic, non-combative viewpoints. That is just not something that we understand here in America. But yet, people like Kim Davis, the, the Christian uh, city clerk, was put in jail. She was the first uh, Christian to be put in jail for exercising her right of conscience uh, because of her religion last year. And everybody thought it was a big joke. Um, but this is going on all the time, and uh, we re represented Avi and fr uh, American Freedom Alliance uh, back in 2009. Joe Peterson, who's on our board and also on AFA's board, is here somewhere. He was a witness in the case. And that was a case where Avi and AFA simply wanted to uh, hold a fundraising event at the California Science Center's IMAX Theater. Uh, the problem was that the topic of the event was intelligent design theory which many people who are uninformed conflate with uh, biblical creationism. Well, the California Science Center is affiliated with the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C., and the Smithsonian has a history of forbidding any kind of program or, or uh, project involving intelligent design. When they learned about it, they contacted the Science Center, and the Science Center ca canceled the contract with AFA, uh, which was a breach of contract and also in violation of their First Amendment uh, freedom of speech. Uh, we ended up winning that case and, and settling it. Um, but you never heard about it, did you? No. Nope. And you haven't heard about half of what we do. Phelan here 
uh, I'm proud to say, uh, called me up one day and said, somebody wants to sue me in Texas. Somebody who was part of his Frack Nation film. And the attorney uh, threatened a defamation action. Took just one letter to, to turn them into mute, silent idiots <laughs> who never sued. So that's the work we do. Anyway, I want to thank Jim Enstrom, who, when he got our uh, Independence Day e-blast, uh, for suggesting to Karen that I speak. Because, you know, first of all, I you listen to Trevor, and what more is there to say, right? Uh, he sort of covers all four bases. But um, uh, Jim thought it would be interesting for me to read this. And I'm going to read it, because I can't remember it. Uh, but I wrote this thinking, uh, what do I tell people this 4th of July? We're heading into an election where I feel like our freedom's been uh, irrevocably lost. If we lose this election, I think it'll be gone. Not just for our lifetime, it'll be gone for uh, potentially forever. It will never be the same America. And why is that? Because Hillary Clinton will do at least two things. She'll appoint liberal judges who will uh, end up revoking the First and Second Amendments. And uh, the second thing she's going to do is appoint Bill Clinton to be uh, the General Secretary of the UN, and they're going to own the world. And between the two of them, they're going to change this world fundamentally. And so we can't really allow that to happen, can we? So as I'm thinking about the 4th of July and what independence means, I'm getting pretty upset. So I wrote this. I'll be skipping over some parts. Anyway, folks, these are not the best of times. As our celebration of the American Revolution's fight for independence from the tyranny of a despotic regime takes place this weekend, America is under siege by an administration hell-bent on destroying our nation. And make no mistake about it, President Barack Hussein Obama is an enemy of constitutional government. His lawless actions have accelerated the goal of Democrats and progressive leftists like him to hand America over to a global order that robs us of our national sovereignty, our culture, our patriotism, our liberties under the Bill of Rights, and our unity as United States citizens. Now more than any time in my lifetime, freedom, the freedom our founding fathers left us to preserve, seems to be quickly eroding. Obama promised to fundamentally transform this nation, and he kept that promise. But he kept it even as we allowed our congressional representatives, our congressional leaders, to forget that they're elected to represent our interests not their political ambitions. And we've got to change that, both in Congress and in the White House. Um, and we're a nation of historical illiterates. There was a video on the Drudge Report showed some guy asking people what the 4th of July is about. I want to tell you something. There are people like Phelan McAleer and his wife, and James O'Keefe, and Tom Fitton at Judicial Watch, who are heroes. They are unsung heroes. Because they are out there exposing the truth <laughs> visually and in the case of Tom Fitton and Judicial Watch, Watch by doggedly doing what Congress ought to be doing. So these people are my heroes. Um, the night before the Brexit vote, my wife Gigi over here and I were at the Ritz-Carlton in, in Laguna Beach. We were talking to this conservative couple. It was the night before the Brexit vote. And we had a Fox News, we had Fox News on a TV there in the lounge that we were at. And they, this couple sat down and they said, oh, we don't want to interrupt your viewing of that. I said, no, no, stick around. We'll turn it off. We're just interested in what's happening with the vote in England. And their response was, what vote? Right? Well, I mean, think about it. Did you see anything in the LA Times the day before, the week before, the month before about Brexit? No. I mean, the, one of the most critical referendums uh, concerning whether or not we're going to allow for sovereign constitutional governments to operate or to enforce a, a union coalition of states that deprives its citizens of that, of their national sovereignty and of their rights. Uh, is about to take place and nobody in America knows about it. They knew about it the next day Because the next day the liberal media was hollering right well this conservative couple didn't know about that and when we talked to them about the Second Amendment uh, And the Orlando incident they felt that that incident proved that we need to do something to control 
the, the sales and use of guns in this country. These are conservatives who do not get it. So, you know, we wonder what it is we have to do. We're just one person at a time trying to make changes here. Um, anyway, that leaves me breathless. I close this thing by saying that my dad was, is a retired Air Force gen general. He's 90 years old now. Uh, he enlisted at the age of 17 in the Navy in World War II. Uh, when he came back to the States, he went to USC on the GI Bill. Uh, went, went into Air Force ROTC because it was his dream to become an, a pilot. And then was called to Korea. Uh, in Vietnam, he commanded a squadron of F-100s at Benoit. And so he's fought in three wars. And what I wrote here was, I'll be damned if I allow his service and sacrifice for our country or the service and sacrifice of our other soldiers, sailors, and airmen to be wasted on account of a law-breaking government that puts the rights of transsexuals above the rights and security of America's God-fearing fighting heroes. Amen. Thomas Jefferson in the Declaration of Independence, our, our founding document, said, and you know these words by heart except for the final words of the paragraph, and that's what I want to emphasize. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just power from the consent of the governed. And this is where we need to be serious, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people, and I would say a duty, to alter or to abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. So I just want to close by saying that um, we're at that time where it's time that we have to form potentially a new government. If Hillary Clinton is elected, if she appoints liberal judges, if it goes the way we think it's going to go, then we're forming that army right now. As I said in this thing, I don't know if the IRS is going to come calling on me after writing that, but that's our founding docu document. That's what it says. So anyway, I want to be inspiring, but at the same time I want to be short, so I'm going to conclude by saying that uh, it's been an honor to, to be here uh, and to speak to you and to do it after and to follow Trevor and Phelan. That was nice of you, Karen. Thank you. Th yeah, thank you. It just makes me stronger, so. <laughs> anyway, half of you know me. For the half that doesn't know me, go to www.freedomxlaw.com. Follow us, subscribe to us, and donate to us. Thank you. You can tell the work that AFA does is just so important and it's really an honor to have board members such as Bill on the board as well as everybody else who I've mentioned. So again, thank you all for being here. We'll give you a few more minutes uh, and you know, I, I don't want to just jump off that. It was a fabulous, it was such an important piece, Independence Day, we want to celebrate freedom, right? That's what, what it was all about, but it was so timely because I, I don't know about you, but I didn't feel that great. Brexit was fabulous. It was such a first step in the right direction towards sovereignty, towards the people's voice being heard against whatever you want to call it, the establishment, the elite, whatever, G global governance. It was so huge, and some people weren't shocked. I personally was pretty shocked. It felt so meaningful, and if you read the preamble to the Declaration of Independence, all of it, with the change of one word from the king to the, the powers that be in the European Union over in Brussels, it was exactly the same thing. Their Declaration of Independence, the, the vote that they just took, was exactly like what we were, like what we did 240 years ago. Freedom is on the march, it is. We have to help it. AFA is here to help it. Freedom X is here to help it. Many of you are parts of organizations that are also here to help it. I want to 
uh, just let you know, Santa Monica Republican Women is opening a headquarters on Santa Monica and Stanford on the 19th of this month. I've also been asked to announce Dinesh D'Souza's movie is opening a handful of places on Monday and then everywhere all over the place. Another truth teller who has paid the price. He's been imprisoned for some weird campaign thing and compare that to the Democrat not uh, prospective nominee. It's yeah. insane. It's really, we're living in completely crazy times. So find who's doing stuff. We're doing stuff. Bill Becker's doing stuff. The Republican women are doing stuff. We've got science organization. Um, James, what's the name of your group? For, sci for in scientific, integrity. scientific integrity. Fighting the, the nonsense. He's also on our board, Dr. Jim Enstrom, um, also Hero of Conscience Award um, honoree last year with his wife, Marta, who is here. What they've done to science is unspeakable. It used to be one of the last bastions. You know, all else was falling apart. At least there's truth in science. No, of course, not anymore, right? So Jim Enstrom, who, who, who else is a, a freedom fighter? Who? Many of us, yeah. California Freedom Project. California Freedom Project. Fabulous. And Democracy Broadcast, who's Scott Jacobs. Gigi, Bel Air, Malibu, Women's Republic. Federated, fabulous. It doesn't have to be overtly political, as we are not overtly political. But, of, but Matt Malkin, who's here somewhere, yes. Rage Against the Media. How did I forget? Rage Against the Media, which is how I found my way here. It's the media. Without the media and education, they could never have accomplished all that they've accomplished. Not ever. Not anything. Everybody you know who knows all the garbage they know, they only think they know it because of the media. Karen, yes. I just want to say for America. Yes. Yes, by all, right, for, for all of these, wherever possible, go to the theater. Numbers mean everything. That's the same with what's the environmental movie. Climate hustle. Climate hustle. If you see it, they think nobody, they think they have a monopoly. By getting our numbers up, we're breaking that monopoly and showing them they don't have it anymore. So do that. Support alternative media, support Fellum, support Trevor, support these movies, support whatever. It all makes a difference. Support Southern California Republican women and men. And citizenecon.com. Citizenecon.com. So lots. We're all doing stuff. Do what you can to help. Okay, pitch is over. Raffle will be in just a couple of minutes. I'm feeling great. I'm, you know, we're, we're all just... They, my pleasure. It's my honor. It's such an honor to be part of Avi's organization to do what can be done. Thank you. I'll be back in a couple minutes with the wrap.
Okay, hello? All right, it's raffle time. Oh, we, hold on. We've also got books for sale, source books, other books. Come on over to our table. 